Hey everybody, welcome to the next lesson in the Understanding WordPress Post Metabox course. And in this lesson, we're going to jump right into writing some code in order to get us a little bit familiar with the WordPress Metabox API. After that, we're going to talk about the project that we're going to be building throughout the remainder of this course. And in the next lesson, we'll be talking specifically about those features. But we've taken a look at Metaboxes, we've seen the Codex articles around them, so let's get started writing a little bit of code. Make sure your web server is running and go ahead and fire up your IDE. Navigate to the project that you've set up and in the WP content directory, click on the themes directory. And then we're going to be working with 2013. If you scroll through the files and directories that are contained within, you'll notice that there is an ink directory. This is where we're going to be adding our code. So double click that and then add a new file and let's call it custom post metabox. PHP. Next, we need to make sure that we include this properly within the themes functions.php file, so let's do that now. Return to the root of the theme directory and click on functions. And then at the top, where they're adding other files from the ink directory, make sure we do the same. At this point, just to make sure that we haven't bombed anything, written any bad code, let's go back to our dashboard and refresh. Permitting you don't see an error written out here at the top of the screen, you should be good to go. So let's return to our IDE. All right, here, let's go ahead and open up a PHP tag since that's what we're gonna be doing. And let's create a function, 2013 add custom post metabox. Remember, it is a good practice to get into prefixing functions with the name of the theme or the plugin in which they reside. Now, Whenever I'm working with WordPress API functions from the codex, one of the things that I like to do is leave temporary code comments that give me an idea as the type of parameters that I'm gonna need when working with these API functions. For example, if I return to the add metabox page, you'll see that the add metabox requires several parameters. So I'm gonna copy this line, temporarily return to the IDE and paste them here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say add Metabox, and then I'll fill out the ID, and we'll call this a custom post Metabox. This is how we'll identify it, at least in this lesson. Next, we'll give it the title, and we'll say our custom post Metabox. The callback will be 2013 display custom post Metabox. The post type will be post. The context we'll put as side. The priority we'll put as high. And we won't worry about any callback arguments, so we will not pass a parameter for that. So let's save our work, return to the web browser, refresh our Hello World page, and notice that there are no new meta boxes. Why would that be? Let's return back to the add meta box codex page and take a look at some of the example code. One of the first things that you'll notice is that we have to hook into an action. Now, actions and filters are outside the scope of this lesson and this course. So, for all intents and purposes, note, note that this is how we register our function with WordPress, so WordPress knows how to call it. So, the only thing that we need to change is where it says my plugin add custom box. We'll replace it with 2013 add custom post meta box. Let's save our work. Let's return back to the browser and back to our dashboard and refresh. Now notice we have a new custom post meta box displayed here. However, it's full of a warning. In fact, it says that it's trying to call a function that is a valid callback that doesn't exist. If you hop back to your IDE, you'll notice that we have a function here, our callback 2013 display custom post meta box. We never defined it. So let's go ahead and do that now. We won't worry about writing out any HTML or markup just yet, but let's save our work, return back to the browser and refresh. Well, that fixed that problem, but our custom post meta box leaves a lot to be desired. So let's put a small notice in there just to dress it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and open up an HTML variable. And let's say strong welcome. And then let's put a break tag. 
And then we'll also say, this is our custom post meta box, and it will be used for demonstration purposes only. We'll say echo HTML. We'll save our work. We'll return back to the browser and then we'll refresh the page. Notice here that we've got our message exactly as we've written in HTML and it says exactly as what we've stated. It's relatively easy, right? Now later in the course, we're gonna get into much more advanced functionality, but that's fine. We're laying the foundation for that work right now. So the next thing I wanna do is experiment a little bit with what it means to change the priority and the location of our meta boxes. So let's return to our IDE. And rather than say that we want it to be on the side, let's see what options are available by going to the add meta box codex article, finding the priority option. It says high, core, default, or low. So let's try each of these. Right now we have high, let's say core. Let's return to the browser, refresh. Notice that it's moved and it's all the way down here at the bottom. Let's say low. We'll refresh. Notice that it's still low. Now let's look at its context. Currently we have side. Let's change side to normal. Return to our browser, refresh. Scroll down below the post editor. And there it is. And notice, it's our same content, but it's formatted in a slightly different way that fills the width of the container that is the same size as the post editor. And then finally, under normal, we'll see what last option we have available. We have advanced. So let's see what happens if we put in advanced. Save our work and refresh our dashboard. And notice that it's still here now. The reason that there's a variety of different options is because meta boxes can appear in a variety of different places within relation to each other. So some may be considered advanced, whereas some may be also considered normal or low. And the advanced and the normal may be about the same, but if you have two meta boxes, one of which is advanced and one of which is low, then the one that's low will be left lowest in the chain and the one that's advanced will be left higher. So remember that meta boxes are related to one another in their positioning based on that context. So at this point, we've written some code. We can go ahead and remove this particular code comment in our IDE. We've hooked into the add meta box action. We've written our first call into the add meta box API, and we've even displayed something on the post screen. The last thing I wanna show is that this is not available on the existing pages screen. So let's look at about and click on edit. And notice that nothing appears here. But if we were to hop back to our IDE and change post to page, then a refresh, there's our custom post meta box, meta box. Of course, at this point, it's disappeared from posts. As we move forward into this course, we're primarily going to be interested in only working with posts. So hopefully this has given you enough information for how to get started and some of the stuff that we're going to be doing. In the remainder of this course, we're going to be writing a plugin, which is not too far off from writing a file in the ink directory. We'll clean those files up at the beginning of the next course, and then we'll plan the features for exactly what we're going to be doing throughout the remainder of the course. I'm really looking forward to planning the features as we're treating this like a true software project, which is really exciting, and it's going to pave the way for what we're going to be building. So I look forward to seeing you guys there, and I hope you're excited as well.